Hi, my name's Phil. I like to talk about politics and in this video I like to discuss a whole range of issues around this spectacular by-election in North Shropshire yesterday as the Liberal Democrats delivered quite earth-shattering blow to Boris Johnson and the Conservative Party that has held this seat for nearly two centuries. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So, the result was interesting, wasn't it? It wasn't just the few hundred vote margin that I was expecting, one way or the other. The Lib Dems smashed it. They won with a majority of nearly 6,000 votes. And the turnout wasn't as low as I expected either. For a by-election on a grim December day, it's a bit nippy, the turnout wasn't at all bad. Also consider that this is a Brexit voting area a Brexit voting area, as well as a Conservative voting area. And yet, the voted for a, a pro-European party to get rid of the Conservative candidate. This is not the sort of seat that you would have expected Boris Johnson to be vulnerable in. But it is a seat that has surely sealed his fate. And I wonder what Boris Johnson had for breakfast. I'm guessing he turned down the toast. Because there wasn't just a Westminster by-election yesterday, but some council ones as well. Several of them were Conservative seats. And, and, you know, before I'd even had my breakfast, four Conservative seats had flipped, fallen like dominoes. There may have been even more that I haven't caught up on yet. You know, so taking all the results from yesterday as one, absolute rout for the Tories. I, I may break out into a little happy dance. I think I've got it out of my system. I should be fine, but just to warn you. But let's begin by considering this, why this by-election even happened. Why this particular by-election even happened. Because the irony is strong. You know, I mean, by-elections do happen. And this could have been a by-election anywhere for any, any number of reasons. But this particular one, this one, was for the seat that Owen Paterson was forced to resign from after Boris Johnson tried to smash up the Standards Committee, which has oversight over MPs' behaviour, just to prevent him facing a suspension for his conflicts of interest arising from a dodgy second income for lobbying work. A suspension that would now be over, done and dusted with. This is what started off the public's irritation for Boris Johnson. If Patterson had just accepted that punishment, if Johnson did nothing to stop it, then the whole corruption scandal avalanche would never have happened. You know, he would then not have been in a weakened position when the Christmas party's fiascos began. You know, he may have been able to claim that he was unaware, thrown lots of people under the bus to save himself, the public give him the benefit of the doubt. You know, like they have kept doing, infuriatingly, up until this Owen Patterson situation. There is no longer benefit of the doubt anymore. The scandals just kept coming and coming. The by-election, even if it had to take place, should have been an easy win for the Conservatives. I cannot emphasise just how easy a win that should have been. Even with a reduced majority, they would just claim, you know, ah, uh, mid-term, the party of government doesn't do well in by-elections. Indeed, a government minister, I think it was Oliver Dowden, was saying, look, you know, we, we, since 1989 all the way to now, whilst we've been in government, we've never won a by-election. And that would be fine, that would be true. But this was a really safe one. They've never had to fight one as safe as this. But, you know, at the same time, as long as they'd have won it, it would have been comfortable, unremarkable, even with a hefty loss to the majority. No major problem. But in the run-up to the election, the media were interviewing local residents, conservative voters... And they were saying they wouldn't vote Tory while Boris Johnson was in charge. They were fed up of him. Fed up of the scandals, fed up of the lies, fed up with the broken promises. The Conservatives also made a spectacular error with their candidate. They parachuted someone in from Birmingham. Now, when you have a safe seat, this sometimes happens. It's absolutely fine. Not from Birmingham, I'm not picking on Birmingham necessarily. But if you have a star of the future, and maybe this person was such a man, I don't know. Of course you want to give them a safe seat. But you don't do it for a by-election which could actually be a tight run contest. You only do it for a safe seat. 
He was even told not to do media interviews because that would expose him on local issues of which he would have little knowledge. You know, he stupidly did some anyway. I think it was the Daily Mail that was interviewing him and tried to ask if Boris Johnson was a man of honesty and integrity. And the, the candidate repeatedly dodged the question. The guy kept answering, uh, asking at him. He was absolutely eating for breakfast. That was why he wasn't supposed to do media interviews. They had a candidate who wasn't local and he was having to hide from the press. That's absolutely fatal. Because that then means the election is entirely about Boris Johnson. They're trying to say, oh no, it's about the local candidate. No, it's not. Because the local candidate is hiding from the press. And the local candidate's not even local. No, this, that made the by-election entirely about Boris Johnson. Fatal. But, but Shastri Hurst, who was the Tory candidate, also messed up badly in other regards. He had a campaign poster with a background on it. And you'd think to yourself, oh, you know, local local architecture is that. No, it was from a street in a constituency next door, not the place he was trying to represent. It's the sort of mistake you get away with in a walkover contest. People would go, oh, that's a bit of a cock up. But that'd be it. But that's just cavalier for this flashpoint. You know, this by-election was being touted as potentially the end of Boris Johnson. There were Tory MPs saying if he loses this, that's the end of him. And yet, such a cavalier attitude towards it. And in an uncharacteristically laissez-faire attitude, no effort put in into making sure that they had the best campaign that they could. Because normally Tories actually put effort into that. Not into other things. Not what they should be doing. But into campaigning, that's where they put their effort. They should have at least gone for a local candidate who already had some regard locally. You know, uh, Reform UK were also campaigning, unhelpful to the Conservatives as well. In the end, the votes that they took in a tight contest, you'd have gone, that would have made the difference. But it wasn't a tight contest. In the event, didn't make any difference. But because uh, the, the tight was, wasn't tight. The only boon for Boris Johnson was that the local Labour Party didn't stand aside as expected. In the previous by-election, the Lib Dems stood aside and let Labour go hard at it. The Lib Dems did put up a candidate, but they only campaigned in two wards that were heavily conservative and would never have flipped Labour. And in fact, they were doing that to try and turn off. They were doing that deliberately to try and split the conservative vote. They were trying to do Labour a solid there. We all expected Labour to do likewise here. Now, the national leadership didn't put resources into it, so they effectively were standing aside. They didn't send shadow ministers to campaign, at least not at first. But the local party seemed aggrieved that the Lib Dems were being considered to be the best chance. We're the ones who come second to the Tories, they whined, completely missing the point that it was a distant second and that the demographic of the area, if it was going to flip from Conservative, wasn't going to swing to Labour. These are Conservative voters. A Conservative, not swing voters, not the ones who will sometimes be Labour, sometimes Conservative, they're sort of in the middle. These are Conservative voters. A Conservative voter can be persuaded to vote Liberal Democrat if the actual Conservative Party turns into something that they can't identify with, which is what's happened, but they will not vote Labour. But the local Labour Party reckoned they had internal polling that had them a close second to the Conservatives. At that point, I knew that they weren't just thick, but actively lying. You can't actually get a poll that badly wrong, even if you have no idea what you're doing. You know, I've waited until the results came out and uh, before challenging them again, uh, given the results, I wanted to set whether they were just grossly incompetent or deliberately lying. Either way, they shouldn't be allowed to run affairs again. But I was really annoyed when I saw front bench Labour MPs down there campaigning. Not in a great way, but as some of them did. Even Starmer publicly supporting the Labour candidate, I thought, oh, what? I get that they don't have a formal alliance and probably can't form one. There's probably too much resistance in the party. I get that. That's not the party leader's fault. And I also get that no Labour MP can publicly back a candidate of another party when Labour are standing. There are rules. That's understood. There's nothing to say they, can just, they can't just keep quiet though. I cannot tell you how pissed off I am at Labour right now. You know, and then the usual bad takes as well from others in the, the, the Starmer out crowd. Oh, you got loads less votes than Corbyn. Like if, if, if the front bench had literally done nothing, Starmer would have been able to say to them, that's because I stood aside, you knobhead. You know, look at these people who for several years, before Starmer, for several years were going, oh, we know what to do, we know what to do. Right, this is our opportunity. Stand aside, lads, we'll show you our socialism's done. Oh, bugger, we lost the election. 
Oh shit, we lost the next one as well. Oh, by really badly this time. Do these people actually think to themselves, maybe we should rethink our political aptitude here? No, 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 it must be everyone else who's stupid. Fortunately, didn't have an impact. This was a hammer blow and their stupidity did not cost the seat. But consider what it means at the next election. Because make no mistake, there won't be any of this then. There won't be the Labour against the Lib Dems in the general election. There can't be, because it won't be about an individual seat, hundreds of them. Labour can't target them all, the Lib Dems can't target them all. So there won't be any crossover, there won't be direct resources at the same seats as each other, that won't happen, that's a given. But we still need people to vote tactically, because they won't be standing candidates down. We need them to vote tactically. As some did in 2019, sorry, smashing things, wasn't enough. Now imagine how a Lib Dem who's watching all this must think about this. So they thought, hang on a minute, in the last by-election, our lot stood aside for yours, you wouldn't return the favour. Now imagine a Lib Dem in a constituency that, to get rid of the Conservatives, has to vote Labour. Has to. But they'll be thinking, well, if Labour won't stand aside for the Lib Dems, why should the Lib Dems stand aside for Labour? Bloody stupid. And you could say, but the tactical voting worked here, Phil. So it might at the election, despite all this nonsense. This was a by-election, right? It had the national media focused on it for weeks. Everyone in North Shropshire would have been getting the message loud and clear, because it was even in the national press, to get rid of Boris Johnson, vote Lib Dem. At the election, it's all the seats at once. There's no national media focus on the particular place telling people, if you want to get rid of the Tories, you have to vote this way. You know, so we need people to vote tactically without that message being rammed down their throats every day for weeks much less likely to work without the party leaderships being a lot cleverer. I mean, we've seen in the past few weeks that we cannot rely upon local party groups to use any brains, cannot tell you how much it always upsets me in any context to be part of a team that doesn't try, even just for a casual game. At least try. You know, but to be part of a team that puts effort into losing is just next level. Being a pragmatic Labour supporter in this country, do you know what? It stinks, I can tell you. I can see now why there are so many Conservatives in the country. It's way easier being a Tory. Much less effort, much less depressing. Maybe not today. But even today it's depressing being a Labour supporter. And I don't want to hound these local nitwits out of the party or anything. I don't want to go co-leave. Anyone can get things badly wrong, especially when you're outside your area of expertise. And I doubt any of them were skilled mathematicians or political analysts. But any party that aspires to government cannot allow incompetence in the decision-making process. The stakes are just too high. You know, we should have seen that with what happened since 2019. Right now, the claim that we are a democracy is currently very weak. We can still just about make it, but only just. And I don't know whether we still can in another couple of years. But something that I did find interesting, this is interesting, you, the latest YouGov poll from this week has the Tories unmoved, but support from Labour going down in favour largely of the Lib Dems. Right? A little bit of SNP as well, but in Scotland, Labour are nowhere. Now, this might not look good for Labour. Oh, Labour support, you think, oh, they've lost some there. Could actually be very good. There's been a lot of talk, of course, of tactical voting this week. What if this poll reflects people taking a good look at the area they're in and deciding that maybe they should vote Lib Dem rather than Labour? Maybe they'd naturally think, well, I prefer Labour, but actually, here, I need to vote Lib Dem. Maybe they're going to base their vote on an assessment of the parties. You know, who can most challenge the Conservatives? Not which one do you most agree with. Which one can most challenge the Conservatives? Maybe the poll shows people thinking tactically. That would be brilliant if true and extended until the next election. There are other explanations, of course. For example, the Lib Dems have been more active in campaign terms because they threw everything at this election this week. They've had a lot of press. Um, but it would actually be very good news for Labour if people start to think strategically. Like I tried to say to someone, you know, as a Labour supporter, sometimes voting Labour is voting for a Conservative government. And sometimes voting for the Lib Dem candidate is voting for a Labour government. You know, if you add up the polling for all the anti-Tory parties in that poll, you give poll, it comes to 60%. That's a powerful majority if it can be shaped with tactical voting. 
But if we cannot trust local parties to use their brains, then our next hope is for the wider voting public to do so. It's unfortunate because that means needing more people to be working as one. I'll also throw in as an aside that The Sun were reporting long before the polls closed that senior Tories were saying they'd lost. An obvious trick to get people out to vote, targeting apathetic Tory voters who didn't really want to support Johnson um, or had just had a hard day or looked outside and went, oh, it looks a bit cold. But they didn't want the party to lose the seat it's had for two centuries. In addition, maybe getting some Lib Dem voters to not bother going because, oh, our side's winning, is it? Oh, we won't bother then. You know, uh, nobody really wants to traipse down to the polling station if it's a bit cold and they don't need to. But senior Tories could not have known how the result was going before the polls even closed without breaking some serious laws. And I know people from across the political spectrum can be a bit naughty, but for corrupt to the core, you can never beat the Tories and their handlers in the media. This was a deliberate attempt to influence the election. It's quite illegal. That should be investigated. I bet it isn't. Now, in terms of where this leaves Johnson, at this time, I don't know. Some MPs said that if he lost this by-election, it would be curtains for him. But a few MPs don't speak for 181 of them, and that's how many are needed to get rid of him. Also, just because some will make their minds up doesn't mean they will act quickly. They'll want to talk to each other in order to coordinate. They may have already done that. Uh, there may be some who will not base their decision on this by-election, but on how he responds to COVID, potentially triggering their letter if he likes, you know, if he looks like he wants to impose uh, tighter restrictions, say. All six leaders of the 1922 committee, which is the group which represents backbench Tory MPs, said that members could email their confidence letters and it would be followed up with a phone call by the chair, Sir Graham Brady. Because normally the procedure is you have to write a letter, but then he wouldn't get those letters until after the Christmas break because they go to his office in Westminster. So by allowing for this alternative procedure, the executive of the 1922 committee are basically hinting, they're going, hey, hey, you can, you can email, you know, if you don't want to wait. They're basically saying they expect MPs to write those letters in significant numbers during the Christmas recess. Uh, but that might not happen. I gather, you know, I saw a report, uh, Sir Roger Gale, influential Tory MP, he was saying, oh, that's it, Johnson's had two strikes, one more and he's out. So it's like he's had loads more than two strikes, mate. But, you know, he's saying that he at least is going to let Johnson linger on. I mean, I've said before, as long as you feel the damage is centred on Johnson, a rational Tory MP... I know there's not many, but a rational Tory MP would take the view that keeping him on for a while longer while you work out the successor behind the scenes will make for a smoother and more effective transition. The danger for them is if they feel that the damage is done to the party. because And it could be, because bear in mind the other safe Tory seat that the Lib Dems took earlier this year, that was before the scandals that destroyed Boris Johnson's reputation. That result was about Conservatives with a small C, as they're called, been not at all happy with the direction that the whole party was moving in. So there are warning signs for the reputation of the wider party. It's not necessarily a given that they can just think that this is centred entirely around Johnson. But what does the majority of Tory MPs think? That's what matters, not what I think. Do they think that waiting is better or do they think they're at panic stations now and they must act in all haste? You know, bear in mind that when Parliament returns, if they are still backing Johnson, opposition MPs will be intolerable. Even Labour messed up, you know, even though they messed up here, uh, not standing aside properly, they'll still poke at this. This was an anti-Tory and an anti-Johnson vote. And every, align, every aligned MP against the Conservatives will be kicking Johnson in the knackers on a daily basis. Life will be intolerable for the Tories until they get rid of him. And just finally, as I've gone on too long already, I was asked this. How many Tory seats would be at risk with, with such a big swing? Almost all of them. In reality, they won't be. Because like I already said, no party can actually afford to target hundreds of seats at once. They can't do that in a general election. But what this result does show is that every single seat that Labour or the Lib Dems do decide to target, every single one of them, assuming they target intelligently, can be won. Same applies to anyone else, by the way. SNP, Plaid, potentially Greens. But we're talking about in terms of the, the scale of the shift, because the SNP have already got all, most of uh, all the seats in Scotland. In terms of the big shifts, Labour and the Lib Dems, right? Every seat that they target, if they, if they do target sensibly, every single one could be won. That's what this result shows. If I was a Tory MP, and, and I thought that an opposition party might well want to target my seat next time, 
I'd be feeling a little bit nervous right now. But those are my initial thoughts, all very encouraging, and I think I'll have many more thoughts to come. But for now, I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.